Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jupyter Notebook. What I'm going to do is I'm starting off the <clears throat> lesson here with my Firewalk, Fire, Firewatch, <laughs> Firefox to run the Jupyter Notebook. So what we'll do is we're going to log in to https slash slash <coughs> jmkll.org. And then what happens is it this login screen comes up and I have sent you your login credentials. It is the first part of your email address before the at sign. Uh, so it's usually your first name and then as a series of six or seven numbers. Um, and then the default password I've included already. And your first uh, task is to change your password. And I ask you to do this just to keep um, friendly fire uh, from messing up your account. Because if everybody has the same account, then it makes it, you know, I prefer people be cave and be kind. Um, I have had troubles in the past, but not too many. Um, those students have been, <laughs> Let's just say they didn't get the score they thought they could get. <laughs> and I gave them extra assignments to help those that they were actually hampering. And then I steered them towards security. <laughs> so what we've got here is that once I log in, you now have this thing called the Jupyter Notebook. And this is a shared Jupyter Notebook. So it's called Jupyter Hub. And the first thing I wanna do is kind of review a little bit about what I already showed you. So when you first log in, you get this file manager looking thing. And if you go to new and then terminal, this is where all the good jobs are. Um, and I'll make this a little bit bigger for the video is that you're gonna have to get used to the command line doesn't matter what you do or what you work on or what industry you're in. If you're in computers and you want to move up the food chain, you're going to have to know the command line. So the sooner you get a handle on it, the better. And since most of you are digital natives, you grew up with your cell phone. Some of you may have never seen a command prompt until now. So to review, to change your password, you type in P-A-S-S-W-D. You type in your old password, and then you hit enter, and you put in your new password, and then hit enter, put your new password in, hit enter, and then lo and behold, your password has changed. And I didn't change my password, so this is what you get. One thing I wanna show you is if you mistype something, and you start getting this prompt. Don't freak out. You didn't break anything. That just means it's looking for a completion to the statement. So just hit Control C and start over. So Control C is the way to break out of this. Okay. So a few commands LS. This is the same thing as DIR and DOS. And I set up an alias on this box. So this just gives you a list of directories. So if I go back over here, you can see the list of the same directories, okay? Now, what I want to show you today is how to compile from the command line on the Jupyter Notebook. If you are interested and would like to learn how to run the Jupyter Notebook on your own computer, I will teach you. All you have to do is ask. Okay, we can set up a Zoom meeting or I could do tutorial or however you wanna do it, we can make it available, okay? So what we need to do is, let me show you what we have first, is that all our code that we're starting with here is here, okay? Hello.cpp. Now, if I highlight this and click on edit, you will notice it brings up this editor. It's kind of like a notepad editor or notepad plus plus. And notice it's already giving you the language up here in the corner, okay? 
So let's say I want to change a name. I have to go up here and double click. And then I can change the name, which I'm not going to. And what I've done here is I give you an example of what the command line does. Okay. So we're going to walk through this a little bit, a little piece at a time. And I'll explain this. So what we have here is a very simple Hello World program, except we're using something that you haven't seen yet. It's called get line CIN name. Is this normal? Well, if you're coming from the world of C, not C++ or C sharp, this is normal. But if you're learning C++ from scratch, like you are, this is not the normal way to do it. I thought I would add this to show it to you because in technology, there are always 10 right answers. There's never such some thing as the one only perfect answer. There's the one good answer for your current existing environment, but you move to another company, that same answer won't work, okay? So let's compile this. So what I'm going to do is put, um, make a little change here and just get rid of my please, okay? And say, what is your name? And then do file, save, ta-da. Okay, so you notice it's saved and it says when it was saved. And now what I wanna do is go back to this terminal. Now, how did I get to the terminal? Well, I use this thing, my first login, I say new terminal. And now I get a brand new fresh terminal. The front, and I'll have to make it bigger again. First thing I want to do is change directory space CPP. Why? Because that's where my file is. I do LS, there's my hello CP. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to display. Uh, what line was that? That was line four, okay? I wanna display just line four. So I'm gonna use a few command line tricks as I'm doing this to show you what you can do with this stuff. So I say cat hello.cp to head, and I'm gonna take the top four line, and then I'm gonna pipe it to tail and take the bottom one line. And notice what I get. I get one line out of my file. This is going to be my compile line. So I just take this, copy it and paste it. Oh yeah, it works different here. Uh, paste, well, I got it. Oh yeah, this, this screen, it's the web browser. So you have, it's like Windows and the web browser, you have to actually be in the highlighted area, right click, hit copy, and then right click, paste, and then it'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna compile it. It compiled without any errors. So what am I doing here? Well, let's first of all, just run the program and show you what I'm doing. So I say all I want is name, Dale. Hello, Dale, there it is. Now let's see what actually happened. If I do LS minus L, which is a long listing, you can see this was modified today. This was modified today. This was yesterday. And this was yesterday, okay? So those I'm not really concerned about. I just want the stuff I want today. So now let's explain what those other ones are. Let's remove them. And then remove a dot out. And be careful with the remove. It's the delete, it's very powerful. You can also delete from over here. So you can, so, so if I click here, and hit um, trash can, poof. Are you sure? Yes, it goes away. If I go back to my one that I was working on, this one, and do an LS, I now have only one and only one file in my directory. Well, no big deal. All I have to do is compile my source code again. So let's talk about this line here, okay? Now let's just do this, okay? What this does is it creates an a.out. 
There is a long history of why it's called A dot out. <clears throat> if you're interested, you can go read up on it. But basically, this is my executable that runs hello world. So I'll say Fred today. Hello, Fred. And off it goes. So let's remove A dot out. And let's compile it again and explain the next one, which is dash O. Um, and then say hi. Now, if I do an LS, you see hi. We're on hi. What is your name? Uh, how about um, Betty? And then hello, Betty. So there's hi. So let's remove hi. Let's compile it again. I actually do want to call it hello. And there's no convention. You can call it anything you want. This next one is W for warning. Give me a warning. And then you type in ALL for all. Give me all warnings. So when you compile it, if you have anything that's not perfect copacetic, it will tell you. You do want warnings turned on, especially for C and C++, okay? It's very important you have warnings turned on. The compiler catches a lot, but it doesn't catch everything, okay? So this is working. So I'll run it one more time and call it, um, uh, how about uh, stickle friends? S I N K L E F R I T Z, Nickel Fritz. How's that? Okay, now let's remove hello. And now I want to do one more. And this is the very last one that we'll be using. And notice I'm going up and down through this. I can type in the command history. This works on DOS too. So notice there's this line right here, 693. I can copy it and paste it if I want, but being lazy, I don't have to do that. I just hit bang 693 and it runs it for me. And notice what I have. I have my high and well, LS I should use LS minus L. LR is an alias that you um, normally won't see on a Linux box. I create this. This is my LS command that I use the most frequently. So I made it an alias, call it LR. It sorts all the files by long, shows hidden. The last one touched is on the line, okay? So what I have here, it's working. And say, bud, there it is. Now, what was that command I typed in? And what is this? This is the C++ standard to which you are compiling to. There is C++ 17. There is C++ 03. There is C++ 20. But I don't have that working on this machine because I don't have the latest version. Whoops. G++ minus V. There we go. I have version 7.5, okay, on this box. There are newer versions. Do you need the newer version for this class? No, you do not. We can standardize on using stuff from 2011 or 17 for just about anything we do in this class, okay? Uh, when you start getting into the later versions, you actually have to go out to <clears throat> the C++ standards and read up on it. Your assignment is to take the hello world, play with it, compile it, run it, and give me a screenshot of it working. Okay, that's it. That's the first assignment. Okay, and then I'll do another video for another quick and easy assignment. Okay. So that's all we're going to do is log into Jupyter Notebook, go to the C++ directory, 
look at the hello.c++ or whatever I called it. it. Might have been hello world. I don't remember. You bring it up in the editor, look at it. Then you open your terminal, change your directory, and then you compile it. Okay. And let's do it this way with history. And yep, same number because I haven't logged off yet. Compile it and run it. Screenshot. And that'll be what you submit and, and submit PDFs. So that's all there is to this assignment. Really simple. You're compiling working code. Okay. Goal Jupyter Notebook, navigation command line and compile from the command line. That's the goals of this assignment. Thank you for your time.